So we can use the principle of consistency as a strategy to influence others, but there are a couple of variations of this principle to be aware of. The first of these is called bait and switch. The idea is that you give people an inducement to encourage a commitment, and then once they're committed to a particular decision or behaviour, you take away the inducement that made them commit in the first place. However, they still feel pressured to be consistent with their initial commitment. For example, a retailer might advertise an item at a very good price. What they don't tell you, however, is there are only a small number of these items in stock, or perhaps they've already sold out. So when you go to the store, you find that you can't buy the item that you saw advertised. What you will find, however, are other items that are similar to the one that you came to buy. But these items cost more. Because of the consistency principle, we're more likely to purchase these other more expensive items. This is a common strategy used with toys at Christmas time, particularly very popular toys. A second variation of the consistency technique is called lowballing. And like bait and switch, this also involves an inducement in getting a commitment to make a decision or behaviour, but then increasing the costs of performing the action, which then pressures the individual to be consistent with the commitment. So you might advertise a product for a great price, but then once the buyer's committed to the purchase, you reveal additional hidden costs. Cialdini saw examples of lowballing in use when he worked as a used car salesman. He noticed that the owner of the car yard systematically underpriced the cars by about $400. So the cars were cheap and people would be attracted to the cars because they were cheap. If you're the buyer, you'd be like, yes, I think I'm happy to buy this. And the salesman would say, that's great, that's fantastic, but let's not seal the deal now. It's been a long day. Why don't we do the paperwork tomorrow? In the meantime, take the car home, just drive it around, show your family and friends, then come back and then we'll do the paperwork. This might not happen anymore so much, but let's not forget this was in 1978. So you'll drive it home and you're like, yes, that was awesome. I kind of like this cheap car. But remember, if you're like most humans, what you're doing is rationalising the decision. You're generating all these other reasons why that was a great decision. It's not just because it was cheap. It handles well, it sounds good, it smells good, whatever reason you came up with to like the car. So now you're thinking this is great. And then you come back and the salesperson comes out and they look really embarrassed. And they're like, you know what? I thought I could sell it to you for that price. I thought the insurance is part of the bundle, but it turns out it wasn't and you can still have the car, it's just gonna be $400 more. I hope that's okay. Or they'll say, I took it to the boss and the boss freaked out. He said, you can't possibly sell it for that price, we'll make a loss. You can still have it, but it's gonna cost $400 more. Or maybe the trade-in price is disallowed by the used car assessor, or there's a calculation error for the final price. Whatever the story, the car now costs more. Now, what should you do as the buyer at this point? You should walk away. Why? Because that was the reason you wanted to buy the car in the first place, because it was $400 cheaper than the market price. That one reason has been taken away from you, and yet Cialdini would see that people would inevitably go through with the deal, because they had generated all these other reasons why that was a good thing to do.